Again, Christina Martins has not mentioned the tunnel. Metrolinx clearly appreciates that the vibration, safety, and sound are major issues in the overpass they, they, because they've offered measures to counteract these issues. They talk about the bells and whistles that are federally mandated for the safety. They talk about the ballasts and bearing pads that, to reduce the vibration of the bridge. They talk about noise barriers to stop the noise. And they've introduced incentives to try to gain support to the bridge, and that's what she's alluding to. None of these would be needed for the time. So how much will these extra things actually cost? What is the true cost of the bridge? And what is the true cost of the tunnel over a long time? That is what I want to know. And that needs to be answered before you can actually decide on whether we should have a tunnel or a bridge. I will explore all the best options for Davenport, not just the small perks to attempt to correct the deficiencies of the second best option. I will represent you. Okay, Mari, so we'll go to you next and we'll finish up with Kirsten. All right. Well, you know, first of all, what I want to say is that what's going to ultimately, I think, make this project work, along with electrification, is the ability to link pathways, um, whether it's commuting routes for pedestrians and cyclists and other modes of active transportation. And what I'm suggesting is nothing new because you, the local advocates and the concerned residents of this community, have been fighting for community interests and community benefits here for years. Um, the NDP wants to, and as your MPP, I will address community concerns by expanding the different modes of transportation and assuring the availability of that crucial community space. And that means mandatory development of new pedestrian and cyclist routes, including the pedestrian bridge from Earlsport Park, prioritizing the electrification, and engage, creating these, not just having community space, but engaging animated community space that we invest in. And those features can't be optional. The fact is though, I just want to say, we should not have had to fight for those community benefits at all. The government should have come in from the start with those community benefits as a baseline. Instead, what we got was the Liberal government coming in and saying, putting you as residents of this community in a really difficult position where everything and every, anything that you have achieved uh, has been like a total struggle. And they want you to be thankful for every dime they are spending. They want you to be afraid that you'll have to go back to the drawing board if they don't win. And you know, they also want you to support the current project as it is, making you feel like there's no opportunity for any more improvements. Neither of those options benefit our community. In fact, this is a project that I think has been full, full of missed opportunities. Most of them stemming from like total lack of transparency and accountability. You have done the job you needed to do in fighting to have your voices heard. Um, going forward, you shouldn't feel like you have to fight to be informed and to provide feedback and to get those community benefits. If I was a more mature candidate, I might have kept my wild card for this last question. Um, but anyways, I'll go forward. If you were um, really mature, you would have made a wild card. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm with this. Um, so I, I've seen the plans for the multi-use path, and I'll admit they look really impressive. But I think the real success here is what the Davenport community has been able to achieve. It goes to show that communities are better designers when it comes to thinking about the projects that impact them. Um, and I hope the learning lesson here is to better integrate communities into the developing process from the beginning. Um, and on a side note, I hope that we get some really good usable bike paths from this multi-use use path. Um, as someone who's had to bike up Lansdowne and cross the treacherous DuPont-Davenport intersections, um, I hope that this is a viable alternative. Um, I also want to be clear, and I want Metrolinx to be clear, uh, about uh, give us an honest estimation about how long the construction will take. Um, I, reading about the Edmonton Crosstown and just thinking about how um, upsetting that's been to um, the local businesses there, I think the multi-use path could bring economic activity, but we need to account for loss in construction. So I want to know from the beginning how long could the construction of the rail will take, and then again, since they're looking to do the multi-use path um, after that, uh, how much extra construction time we, could, can, we um, should be able to expect. Thank you. Well, there it is. Do you want to use your wild card? 
Go for it. Sure. Well, I just think that we're building on that point. I mean, one of the concerns I think that the community has right now is absolutely that construction schedule and the impact. And talking to some of the employers, like we have a company in Ubisoft, maybe many of you are aware, major video game uh, producer uh, in our community. Uh, I used to work at Actra, and I worked a little bit with the folks at Ubisoft, and, and you know they're very concerned about what the construction is going to mean for them. Um, they're probably more concerned about that than anything else. That's what they've told me. Um, and so I'm concerned about that, but. But I also just want to reiterate the point I was making earlier, which is, you know, when we first started going to these meetings about this, this bridge, this super bridge, we were calling it back then, um, the original design that they came forward with was absolutely appalling. And we all know it. It was a bridge, it was nothing more, and every single thing, every blade of grass, every tree that may or may not be cut down was saved because of you. And it shouldn't have to be that way. You know, your community, your MPP should be there with you and the government should be making sure that you have community benefits as a part of any project that's going to impede on, on your livability. Thank you. So I just want to um, point out for those that perhaps don't remember, but when Metrolinx came to the community with this project, it was very, very early on. It was unprecedented how early they came to the community to say, tell us what you want. Here's a bridge. It's like a stick person. Here's a bridge. Now, how are we going to make this integral into our community? How are we going to make sure that it's going to provide the community benefits that you need? Tell us what you need because Metrolinx could have done things differently. They could have come here and said, here you go, Davenport, here you go, this is what you're getting. But what they did is they engaged with the community, had numerous meetings, all of which I was at, if I was not at, my staff was always at, and we made sure that we engaged with the community early on. Many of you sitting in the room have a direct line to the liaison person here on this project. So you have that direct connection with that person, often knowing things just as quickly as we do in our office as to what's going on with this project. That's the type of engagement that Metrolinx has with this community. And I'm proud of the engagement that we've been able to secure with Metrolinx on this particular project. 